It's time to talk about airbrushing and pledge. Hey, I'm John. Thanks for joining me for this video today. A while back, I'd made a video that looked at ways of using pledge floor polish on your models, both as a utility gloss coat and making canopies look more clear and gluing parts together and just all sorts of things. But it was kind of a general overview of what it is, how to use it, and that kind of thing. But in the comments and in questions that I've been sent and just in a lot of ways, I've gotten a lot of uh, requests for uh, what about airbrushing it? Can you go into more detail on airbrushing the stuff? How do, you, how, do you, how do you get it on there? What's the best method to do it? How do you clean up your airbrush when you're finished? All of those things uh, seem to be a recurring theme. So I thought, let me do kind of an add-on video to uh, cover those. Now, if you're not familiar with Pledge, it's a floor polish sold. Uh, I know it's sold here in the U.S. Um, it's sold in other places around the world, of course. It may be under a different name. It used to be known as Future. I know in some places it's called Clear. Um, my bottle is an older bottle. Your bottle won't look like this. The current bottle, uh, according to the manufacturer's website, looks like this one here. So uh, you'll have to check wherever you live to see what is uh, the, the current bottle, the current look for it. But it's basically a cheap acrylic uh, gloss coat. You can brush paint it on, you can airbrush it on, you can mix it with acrylic paints. I've used it to glue on photo etch. There's a whole lot of different uses. Like I said, I did kind of a generic video um, about that and uh, there should be a link popping up just about now, either here or here somewhere and uh, it'll it'll go into more detail about that like I said the focus of this video is going to be talking about airbrushing now the first thing I have to look at when it comes to airbrushing pledge onto your model has to be the preparation of the model itself um, you you can't and, and this goes for any kind of clear coat or even other paint on top of paint you're not going to get a good smooth gloss coat if you don't have smooth paint. There's just no way around that. If, if you've painted it on really thick and there's lumps and bumps and drips and runs, no amount of top coating, clear coating, paint coating, whatever is going to smooth that out. So it's very important that your underlying paint coat be smooth. Now, it doesn't have to be glossy smooth. But it means that when you run your finger across it, you shouldn't feel a lot of texture. A simple way to make sure that your model is ready for the future coat is to just take a soft t-shirt, uh, just a section of the soft cotton t-shirt, not, not anything other than cotton because anything else might scratch it, but just some soft cotton and just buff out the model surface. That'll make sure that it's good and smooth and ready for your clear coat and you're going to have a much better result uh, when you do that. And again, that goes for not only using a pledge, but also any kind of gloss coat, any kind of paint, anything you put on your model, you want it to be smooth. Now, when it comes to the airbrush itself, I keep it fairly simple. I generally use a, an airbrush with a 0.5 nozzle. I have used a 0.3 my preference is to use a 0 0.5. I just like it better. I set my PSI at about 18 to 20. Um, and it's not hard and fast. If uh, There have been times that I've had my air pressure set lower and forgot to turn it up. And it worked fine. There's been times I had a little higher and it worked fine. Test what works for you. But for me, a 0 0.5 nozzle pushed at about 18 to 20 PSI seems to be the right mix to get the future onto the model. And I'm going to say future quite a bit instead of pledge because that's what I've always called it. Now, one of the key things when you're airbrushing pledge or future, but pledge, is don't thin it. And by don't thin it, what I mean is don't thin it. And, and that would be the thinning, don't do it. <laughs> now, the reason I'm being so, so deliberate about making that point is... 
I've tried it. I've tried all sorts of different ways. I've tried thinning it with water. I've tried thinning it with alcohol. I've tried thinning it with ammonia. Not really because I thought those were going to work, but I would see other people say, oh, I always do this and it works great. Every test that I've done, and I've done this not just one or two times. This is something I've applied this stuff, and I keep looking over here because it's on a little table right over here. Say hello to my pledge. But <laughs> this is something I've done, I've applied on hundreds of models, well over 300 models. And so I've been using it a lot, and I've tested a lot of different ways. And I keep coming back to it's just best to use it straight out of the bottle. If you thin it with water, yeah, it's going to be a little thinner, but you're breaking apart the properties that make it such a good utility gloss coat. It's extremely durable and extremely good at self-leveling. You take away that property when you add water. When you add alcohol to it, it just breaks it down. Alcohol is best for cleaning up pledge, not thinning pledge. And ammonia, I don't recommend using that because like alcohol, it breaks the pledge apart and takes away its properties that can that, that are beneficial and at the same time it can be detrimental to your paint and more importantly your airbrush doesn't like it. The color cup of your airbrush will eventually lose that chrome plating that's on the inside. It's going to lose that because of ammonia. I know I finally figured that out after ruining it. Ru ru ruining, ru I can't say it. Messing up an airbrush. So I don't recommend thinning it with anything. It works great right out of the bottle. There's no need to thin it. And if your bottle, if it's kind of old and it started thickening up for some reason, get another bottle. The stuff is not that expensive. But whatever you do, don't thin it. Now when it comes to spraying Pledge on your model through the airbrush, first thing I would say is don't build it up in thin layers. By that I mean if if you start trying to build it up in really thin layers, you're going to lose the advantage that the product gives in how nicely it self levels. There has to be enough product to level. Now, I'm not talking a wet coat where it's dripping, certainly, but if you just try and build up a little bit, even I'm not even a fan of, uh, because, because I've done it, of trying to build up, okay, let me just put on an initial thin coat to, to give it something to stick to. Future is one of the stickiest substances in the world, I think. Put a little drop on your finger and hold your finger together for just a couple of minutes and then try and pull it apart. That stuff has incredible grip. It's, it's not so fragile or not so precious that you have to put on a little bit of a coat to, to get the surface. It's often called keying the surface. You don't have to do that with Future. It works best when you just put it on. A good wet coat, not runny, but a good wet coat is going to be the path to success. Now one of the easiest ways to see if you're putting your coats on too thin is if you start getting kind of a lumpy orange peel look. Future is not going to be, or Pledge, is not going to be a, a high quality final gloss coat. It's, it's, it's not for that. I mean it's for floors, right? But for decals and things like that, it's perfect. And it's going to go on very smooth. But if you start seeing some orange peel, meaning that bumpy looking surface that looks kind of like the skin of an orange, then you're probably putting it on too thin. And it's not, what's happening is it's drying on the surface and beating up because there's just not enough of it to level out. Go a little heavier. That's going to help it dry up into a nice glossy surface. What I do when I'm airbrushing is I'll hold the piece on one of my little skewer sticks and as I'm airbrushing I'll just turn it and look at it in the light to see how is the light reflecting on it because different paints are going to accept it in different ways. By that I mean, for example, if I'm using uh, Tamiya paint to me, a paint dries very flat, and so it's got a little bit of surface on the texture. And I can put on my first coat of Pledge, and I can go with a fairly wet coat, but then I can look at it, and I can see there's going to be patches of areas that are still matte or a little bit of satin, because to me, a paint almost soaks it up because of how flat it is. So 
a second or third coat will make sure that it's, it's well coated and glossy. Other paints, like uh, Vallejo for instance, when I airbrush it over Vallejo, I can usually get away with one coat because Vallejo is generally a smoother paint. It's not quite as matte as Tamiya paints are. And so it's going to accept a single coat, maybe two coats, much better. But just look at the surface as you're working on it. Now, if you have a patch that's just not getting fully coated, it still looks kind of, there's some gloss and there's some, there's some matte. It's just kind of very patchy looking you probably didn't do enough to get the paint smooth beforehand. That's why it's so important when you're using, and again, this is for any gloss coat, any matte coat. You want to make sure the paint is as smooth as possible using a soft cotton uh, piece of t-shirt or something. So when, when you see that happening, you, you, you've kind of missed the boat. You, you may have to sand that area down and go back into the proper preparation for it. Now with regards to applying second and third coats, the stuff dries fairly fast. Typically what I do is I start on one side of a model and I get it sprayed and I work my way around. By the time I get, unless it's a really small model, by the time I get back around to where I started, it's dry enough to apply uh, a second or third coat. If you're not sure, just use your airbrush and just blow air on it. That'll finish drying it up. It, it, it doesn't, it's not like some paints where it has to be perfectly dry for something else to go over it. If you put more pledge over pledge and it's still not 100% dry, it's going to be okay. But what I'm talking about is dry to the look, not to the touch necessarily, but to the look. When you can look at it and you can blow dry, you can blow dry it with your airbrush you've probably got it dry enough to do that second coat. And if you're not sure, just wait 10 or 15 minutes and it'll be good to go. Now, when it comes to drying times, I covered this in the previous video, but I think it's important that I cover it a little bit here. Um, the thing to know about the drying time is this stuff is meant to be walked on, right? And not after days or even weeks. You know, I'll, I'll see people say, oh, I've, I've, I've given this a coat of pledge and now I must put it under a container for seven days and I go why because as the story I told in the last video was you know and it was kind of from a humorous standpoint but you know one time my wife used pledge on the floor people use it for that that's hard to believe but she used it on the floor and I saw you know I, I joked about it that I saw her using it on the floor and I said well why are you why are you doing that you know, we're going to have to let it cure for a week now. And it had only been 30 or 45 minutes and she walked across the floor and said, you're an idiot. <laughs> if you look at the manufacturer's website, it says, give it about half an hour to dry. So this stuff is designed to be dry and walked on in half an hour. So I don't think our little thin applications with our airbrush is gonna, it's, it's not so precious that we can't do anything with it fairly quickly. So don't worry about you know, leaving it sitting for a week to dry. So having said that, it begs the question, well, how much time, you know, Mr. YouTube goofy man, do you, do you recommend that, that, uh, that it dry? Generally, I say let it dry overnight. That's a simple rule of thumb. Um, it can go, it certainly can go longer than that. If you put it aside and you don't come back to work on the model for three or four days, well, that's fine. Overnight is usually good. That's what I generally try to do. But I have airbrushed a model and then cleaned up my airbrush, brought everything back in here to where I work on it because I airbrush over in that part that you can't see. And I bring it back over here to work on and I've started putting decals and even enamel and oil washes over it within 10 to 15 minutes. Now, I'm not recommending you do that, but what I'm saying is it's ready to go much faster than most people will, will tell you it is. So don't get too hung up on drying time. If you airbrush it in the morning and you go and do some things around the house, maybe on a Saturday, and then you eat lunch and you take your nap, and come back in in the afternoon, it's good to go. Go ahead and do whatever you got to do. 
Now, when it comes to cleaning up the airbrush, the, the first thing I do is I just dump whatever's left in the color cup out into a waste jar. I just pour it out. Now, if there's, if there's enough that, that I can put it back in the bottle, I do that. There's no, no need to, to you know, waste it. But if it's just a little bit, I'll put it in the waste jar just to, just to save some time. Once you've put that in a waste jar, you'll still have a little bit in the color cup. What I do at that point is I fill it up with water, swirl a brush around inside of it, and then dump that out in the waste jar. I do that three or four times. And I do this before I ever blow anything through it again. What I'm trying to do is clean out the color cup and the channel that goes into the needle. I want to get that cleaned up as best I can and get as much of it out as I can before I go on and do anything else. Now once I've done that, I go ahead and fill the color cup up again and I just blast the, the water through the, the airbrush. I, I may rock the needle back and forth a few times to try and uh, clear up uh, any that may be sticking to the needle or that may be in the nozzle, but I just go for a full color cup of just plain water and it doesn't have to be distilled water or special water that, you know, that someone, someone went up to a mountain and, and found a spring and they got this water and they brought it back and when they smiled their teeth went ding! It, just water, okay? Water will work. We're on well water here. It's got a lot of stuff in it. I get water from the sink and I just run it through it and I've done it for years and everything's fine. Just run some water through it. Once I run that water through it, I immediately follow it up with some isopropyl alcohol. That's the 91% stuff. Um, and again, I don't recommend using ammonia in your airbrush because as I've said, it will strip away the chrome plating over time and you're left with basically a brass color cup and paint sticks to that stuff way more than you want it to. So I would avoid using ammonia in your airbrush ever. But alcohol, it works really well. And so I pour in some of the alcohol and I may get my brush out again and swirl it around a little bit more because alcohol will break down the, the pledge and it will make sure that any that's left is, is removed from it. But I'll swirl that around with a brush a little bit and then I just spray that back through uh, to make sure that it's really clean. Now, an optional step that I sometimes do if I remember or if I have time or, you know, if I'm just really concerned that maybe it's just not as clean yet, because you'll be able to feel it. You'll be able to feel the trigger pull if there's, if there's any stick to it, if it's sticky at all. You'll be able to feel that. Um, what I do is if I need to do any further cleaning, I put in just a little bit of lacquer thinner. And by lacquer thinner, I mean your Mr. Color type lacquer thinner, you know, Tamiya kind of thing. And I just put a little bit of that in and I blast it through. Now, another thing I may do is I may unchuck the, the airbrush needle and push it forward through the body and just clean off the end of it and clean out the nozzle if I think anything's getting stuck. I generally don't do that, but if it still feels a little sticky, um, I may do that. That process should get your airbrush plenty clean from using Pledge. Now to start wrapping up, uh, one of the things I want to look at are some of the objections that I hear to using Pledge. Because people will ask me, why not just use a, a, a proper modeling gloss coat? And there's no reason not to. The reason I use Pledge is because it's cheap. And I build a lot of models. And yeah, I could probably stretch a gloss coat out for a long while using one of the smaller bottles that I get that I can get from a modeling manufacturer. But I prefer Pledge. I like the way it works better. So that I'm not advocating that if you're happy with your gloss coat, stop using it. But it's just a low cost way to get a very good utility gloss coat that dries fast and is ultra durable and doesn't require, you know, some people don't like using the lacquer based gloss coats because of the fumes and things like that. Um, I've not really liked a lot of the modeling based, the acrylic based gloss coats made for models. I've not really found one that I like better than Pledge. 
So yeah, it's, it's a bit of saving money, it's a bit of personal preference, but it's just a good utility gloss coat. Now to follow on from that, it's not designed to be, well, it's not designed to be used on models at all, but it's, it's not for a final gloss coat if you're really looking for a super smooth finish. Um, I've had some folks that build uh, cars that have contacted me and said, would you recommend using this as my final coat if I want a really shiny look on my car? If you're looking for a shiny look on your car, Pledge will do nicely. If you're looking for a shiny, super smooth look, Pledge is not what you want. There are better modeling products for that that can be polished and things like that. So it's not designed uh, in this type of scenario. It's not, it's not beneficial as a final super high gloss top coat, but it's great to use everywhere else that you need a gloss coat on your model. Another thing that I hear from folks a lot is, well, it'll yellow, it'll turn yellow over time. See this P51, this, this one here? This P51 I was the third model I built when I got back into modeling in 2006. It has a coat of, at the time it was called Future, but it has a coat of Pledge on it. It's not turning yellow. I, I'm not saying that it can't happen because just as soon as I say it'll never happen, there's going to be somebody who's going to drop a comment and go, yeah, it's happened on some of my models. My thinking is when you hear, when someone has told me that it has turned yellow, there tends to be some external factor that has caused that, uh, meaning it's been in sunlight, it's been under an air vent that's blowing a lot of hot air on it. There, there tends to be something external to that that causes it to happen. I've had this model sitting on my shelf now for, what's the math, 15 years. And aside from getting dusty, there's, there's, no, there's no yellowing, there's no change in color. It's been the same from the time I first painted it until now. So don't worry a whole lot about it. Yeah, sometimes in the bottle it will start looking a little cloudy over time. I've not found that that causes any kind of problems. In fact, in some places in the world they can't sell it being perfectly clear because kids might think it's water. So they put something into it to make it a little less than clear. When you spray it on, it still works just fine. So I wouldn't get too hung up about worrying, will this be yellow? Now, if you're still thinking, well, I'd like to try this, but I don't want to go buy a bottle of the, a whole bottle of this stuff just to use to spray some on my models. Well, two, two thoughts to consider. Number one, if you already have some in the house this does, that you're, you know, you're planning to use on your floors, well, swipe a little bit of that. Get a, a small clear plastic um, dropper bottle, put some in there, and just make some use of it and see what you think. If you do get a bottle of it, and you normally use it for your floors and you try it and you don't like it, well, you just have your next bottle that you're gonna to use to make your floors look all shiny. So, you know, it doesn't have to be something that you use specifically for modeling. I'm kind of, you know, a, a little bit particular about it. I like having my bottle. This is my bottle for models, you know, and, and uh, there's, there's times we have a bottle of Pledge under our sink and uh, I saw it in there and I looked at my wife and I said, now, did you swipe this from me? And she said, well, yeah, you remember I did, but I asked you and you said I could take it. And I said, oh, okay, because, you know, there's, there's pledge for models and there's pledge for floors and they're two different things and the, they can't cross the streams because bad things will happen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this video today, especially if you're still watching at this point. I always appreciate the folks that are here at the end of the video and still watching. So. Thank you very much for doing that. In fact, if, uh, if you're still watching at this point, please drop a comment below that just says, clearly so, exclamation point. And, uh, and we'll, we'll be in on the joke. We'll know what it's all about. So uh, we can have a little fun with that. But there is a subscribe button down over here, I think it is. So if you have not already done so, please hit that and subscribe to my channel. There's a bell icon that you can hit that'll let you know when I have new videos out. 
Uh, and again, if you drop a comment down below, if you give this video a like, it really helps me out. It helps me in growing the channel. There's also links down below to social media that I'm on. If you're on one of those platforms, please connect with me there. I'd love to hear from you. And there's a link to Patreon. Um, if you would like to support the work that I do, you can click on that and see what options uh, I offer there. And I would be most grateful for your consideration. And of course, if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much um, because you really do make what I do possible. We just couldn't afford for me to work at the pace that I work with the materials and the models and the things that I have if it weren't for you. So thank you very much for your support and coming alongside us in this hobby to make it happen. And finally, as I always like to do, I'll leave you with one thought. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.